Welcome to the July 15, 2020 uh, Moen Human Rights Commission meetings. Uh, George, do you want to make a quick call, please? Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, first, I just want to uh, point out for those uh, joining online, if you can please uh, have your um, have yourself muted, and then when you're called to speak on, you can unmute uh, and then mute when you're finished. Also, don't forget there's a raise the hand function. Uh, if there's something you want to discuss or question, raise the hand, and I'll point out to Connie that, that you're waiting. Uh, also, when you're finished speaking, uh, if you could please try and remember to lower your hand so that we know when you've raised it again. Um, I'll just point out before roll call that uh, for public uh, that would like to call in and make comments to the meeting today, um, citizens can call 218-299-5001. Uh, if they wish to speak on an agenda item or as a citizen to be heard, again, that phone number to participate is 218-299-5001. For roll call, uh, we'll start with Connie Auden. Yeah. here? Deb White? Yeah, here. Shinwar Mai? Here. Mikkel Pollen Normanden? Here. Willard Yellowbird? And Heather Keeler? Here. The other thing I'll quick point out before I pass back to Connie is um, on the agenda tonight, uh, I did miss uh, putting the law enforcement uh, update item on there. So you may wish to uh, add that to the agenda as part of the next item. I will, thank you. Our next item will be uh, approval of the agenda minutes uh, for uh, June 24th. Mr. Chair, I move to approve. This is Deb White. Deb approved. Do you want to call Josh? I'll this is Heather. I'll second. Oh. oh, sorry. Okay, uh, yes. Connie Adam? Yeah. Yes. Deb White? Yes. Shinwar Mai? Yes. Mikhail Pauline Normanden? Yes. And Heather Keeler. Yes. Okay, uh, next item will be citizen to be had. Do we have any citizen? Uh... Not yet, no. Okay, we'll move to the uh, next item will be uh, uh, law enforcement update. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have I have just a couple things, and then I can open it up for, for any questions that, that you might have for me. I know that one of the things that came up, and I don't recall if it was in our last meeting or if it was in one of the listening sessions, was there were some questions about training while law enforcement students were in, in college. And obviously, we don't we don't do that training at the more police department it's it's on the, the state system and the colleges in the state that that do the training but i did talk to jeff nelson who's the coordinator of the criminal justice program at m state in moorhead and i just asked him some questions about it but but he said if the commission has questions he would be happy to come in and and be kind of a, a guest speaker for uh, for one of our meetings and uh, talk about some of the requirements and the trainings that students are given uh, throughout the two year that they're at M State with him, and then some of the stuff that they have to go through the skills program, programming as well, and then talk about the learning objectives that the state has, uh, the post board has for their learning objectives. If that's something that the commission is interested in, uh, either myself or, or Josh could set up uh, the time with uh, Jeff Nelson to come in and meet with us, and I'll just kind of leave it out there for you guys to, to think about, or we can talk about it after um, the discussion or more now, I guess, whatever you prefer. Thank you so much. If there's no discussion on that or more thoughts on that right now, um, a couple other things that, that I had was, um, I know that Commissioner Keeler and I had talked during one of the meetings or a couple of the meetings about the accessibility of our um, accommodation and complaint tab on the city of Moorhead uh, Police Department website. It was kind of uh, buried in uh, another drop-down menu. So we did talk to staff and they had that 
uh, the tab moved right directly to the front page of the Moorhead Police Department's website. So it is more accessible, should be easy to find if you just tell them to go to um, the front page of our website. It'll just say complaint or officer accommodation slash complaint and they can click on that and they'll be able to fill out the information there. That information doesn't go to an officer. Again, it goes to our police supervisory staff and it's assigned to uh, a sergeant or a lieutenant to, to look into and contact a person at that point. Um, other things that we have going on, we have our summer youth program that we normally have uh, going for eight weeks in the summer that we provide services to and activities to approximately 200 kids a uh, summer this year, we're doing an online based training with them. Uh, they have different speakers that are coming in and educational packets that are being sent out. Our numbers are considerably down this year with it being online, but I believe we have around 75 uh, children that are involved with the program as of this point. De thank you so much, Krija. Deb, you can go ahead. I was just going to mention if you did, um, if we were interested in bringing folks in to talk about uh, MinPost requirements, I could also connect with the PPOE in our department. So Joel Powell at MSUM could, I'm sure he'd be happy to come in and talk about that as well. Hey, you want to say something? Yeah, um, Sergeant Martin, thank you for doing that. I think that it's helpful when we have conversations and, you know, there's follow up to that. I think that kind of shows that, you know, we are on board with this process of moving forward and trying to work together. I also appreciate the emails that I've sent you. You've been extremely responsive and kind of looking into things. Um, so I do appreciate that. Um, I did have one question just as a follow-up that I thought maybe um, would be another kind of quick step that we could implement. One of the things we talked about is when new officers go through their um, like hiring process, one of the things we suggested is that maybe, um, you know, they either attend one of our meetings or that there's some sort of conversation with the Human Rights Commission or at least a member or two of us just to really explain um, you know, why we feel it's so important for our new officers to understand our community and our population. Um, can you tell me if there's been any conversations or follow up on that and maybe when the next group of new hires are, are coming in and if that's a possibility that that could be a conversation? Yeah, good question. So I'll, I'll apologize. Uh, I don't remember having that specific conversation. I remember that we had a conversation about coming in and talking about some of the smudging things and maybe some other um, things that would come up that we could potentially address with them, but I didn't specifically remember um, talking more further in depth other than uh, that one meeting that we had uh, last month. Our next hiring process is actually, oh, we've, we've hired five new officers. They started um, back on June 29th, so they're in their third week of our new officer academy right now. It goes about um, three and a half weeks long. So they've been doing classroom and practical um, scenario-based training for the last three weeks, and then it'll continue on until next week. It's definitely an option for us to, to do something like that. I would just want to, to you know, figure out who it is that's going to come in and the amount of time that would be needed and what specifically we were going to, going to discuss. But I think that's something that we could probably touch base through, through email and get hammered out if that's something that you're looking at. Yeah, um, I think the conversations kind of have started back in January, February, and then we had like our pandemic pause and then now we're back on all this other stuff. But um, I mean, honestly, like I think a very initial introduction and you know we could do something that's really even as simple as 15, 20 minutes if there's a possibility for us to get in front of this new group right now, um, just to make the statement to know that, you know, we do have a partnership, we do have a working relationship when it comes to our minority populations. And so, um, you know, we just really want to be mindful in how we partner with the community, how we work with the community. And so, um, I mean, I know that we only have a week left and I don't want to uh, push to make something happen, but I think that it, you know, if it's a possibility, um, I think it would be really nice 
to see that at least uh, to start that conversation? Because when is the next hiring process? Like how often do you hire groups of new officers? Well, so far this year, we've hired 10 new officers that have started with us. So our process is it's kind of a, a never ending process right now. What we have is we have a uh, established list of applicants. Um, that list was established in um, May of this year. Um, and so that will stay active. We won't do another hiring process until um, we've extinguished that list and there are potential hires or people that would be potentially hired off of that. So um, it may be until the end of this year or beginning of next year before we develop a new hiring list or go through a new hiring process. Right. So I think that just kind of highlights why, if possible, we could at least have a quick introduction with these new officers. Um, because I think if we're waiting, you know, a long period of time, we just miss the boat of building um, that trusting relationship as they're coming into our community, especially during these times. Um, and it can just be one more thing that we help communicate back to the, the bigger community that, that we are working on moving forward in this effort of understanding, um, you know, the bigger relationship. So we can email about it. Um, I mean, I don't want to speak for any of the other commissioners, but I know that with enough, um, you know, kind of notice of time, not like, can you come in five minutes, but I could find a ride over there um, and crutch myself in to have a little conversation if you feel like we could make something work um, next week or even within their first um, week or so, um, you know, after that. So we'll be in touch. I don't want to offer up anybody else's time to come and do that, uh, but I would be willing to do that. Um, for us. Thank you. Deb, you can go ahead. Deb, you can. I was, I like that idea. And I also was wondering what if we were to, and I, and I, I don't, I'm not suggesting we do this right away, but something where in addition to that created a, um, like pairing folks up uh, in a mentoring way, like so that our new officers could be paired with somebody from the community and then I'm thinking about some things that we've done on campus like that when we have, we pair experienced faculty with new faculty. And then we meet for coffee or we meet, you know, at a couple of just informal social things. But if there was some way that we could do something like that, where in addition to having a meeting, that we pair people up and we just, you know, say, hey, over the next, what, you know, six months or something like that, here's some things for you, you know, if you could get together on um, maybe once a month for just get together over coffee or something um, to um, get to know each other. And that way the officer, especially those that, are, that aren't originally from here can learn about our community and develop a, you know, a tie with somebody else from, our, from Moorhead. Thank you That's so much. Idea, Commissioner. So what we, what we do at the police department is that we have uh, maybe five years ago, we established a part team, a peer assistance response team, where we pair senior members of our department with new incoming members. Um, and it's, it's the part team members are members that want to be involved with that. And we pair them with new officers for the first six months, as you suggested, um, where they get to, to kind of have another officer that they can talk to that's not one of their field training officers, that's not one of their supervisors, that they can, like you said, kind of vent some of their um, things that are going well, but some of their frustrations maybe that they're having with our program, uh, trying to give them a little assistance in making it through our training program. Our part team also helps out with um, incidents, critical incidents. We go out and we meet with um, our officers or other department officers when there's um, maybe there's a, a traumatic call that their officers responded to, whether it's a suicide, a car accident, uh, an officer-involved death. We go out and we'll try to help those uh, departments and give them a chance to um, talk about their experience and kind of what their feelings are and what uh, where to go from here. And then we also have um, one of our members of our part team is uh, Dr. Samula Forcords as well as being our wellness coordinator. He's very active in our part team. And then just today he was with our, our new officers training with them for, for a couple of 
couple hours on our wellness program and the chaplain's program that we have at the police department uh, and some of the other events that, that we have going on here. So he was very involved with them. And since he's kind of new to our department and his, his position is new with us, this was the first time that he had a chance to actually have some time at the new officer academy to, to meet with those officers. But excellent idea. Um, it is something that we found beneficial as well, having that program started up here at the department. Well, in this case too, I meant like in particularly for what we could work on is having them paired with somebody who's from a new American community, an underrepresented community. So looking within our own particular communities of color and, you know, having them build a relationship. And now, and it would require um, finding volunteers within the community that would be interested in doing that. But I just think, you know, um, that it might help with building those relationships, even if it's just, it's in, you know, that one-on-one -on -one relationship um, beyond just what they might gain from attending meetings. Sure. Thank, thank uh, you I like that idea. I, I do have to be mindful too of our, our budget um, with, with having officers go out to meet with someone from the public. It would be a budgetary item as well that, that would be implemented. Um, not that to say that that means that we can't do it, but it would be something that the chief would have to get approval for as well and look into. It would not be something that I could approve from, from where I'm sitting right now is what I'm getting at. Yeah. Thank you so much, Krish, and uh, both Commissioner Haider and Deb. Our next item will be Juneteenth uh, discussions, and I think uh, Commissioner Keeler requests to have a future agenda item to discuss uh, recognizing uh, Juneteenth. You, you go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to, to mention, we uh, did have a Destiny holiday uh, scheduled to present and discuss at the meeting with us today, and unfortunately, uh, some family issue came up at the last minute, so she isn't going to be able to attend tonight. But any other discussion is, uh, in, in, in the commissioner will be open. Everyone can comment. Heather. Heather, Heather you go ahead. Okay. Um, I do want to bring it up just because we've been talking about it since February. Um, and like I mentioned in our last meeting that now we move to this meeting, I really want to be intentional, intentional about making the motion to present the possibility of celebrating in, um, Juneteenth as a city holiday, very similar to the process that we went through to celebrate and honor Indigenous Peoples Day. And so um, I know that when we did that for Indigenous Peoples Day, you know, we gave a little bit of the background, which was, I think, really moving and helpful in our decision to present it to city council. Um, I just am wondering if uh, Miss Destiny isn't here today, you know, I, I would really like to not continue to prolong this. Um, do other commissioners feel like we know enough about Juneteenth and the history of it and the relevance of why it would be important in our community to make a motion to present it as a recommendation to city council um, to add it as one of our city recognized holidays. That's a discussion topic. Deb, you go ahead. I, uh, I'd be comfortable having us move it, move ahead as long as I would really like to have um Ms. Destiny speak at so if we brought it to the council have her speak at it or so, you know have because I think she's you know she's been involved with the celebration of it in Moorhead more than anybody else that I am aware of and so I would want to make sure that we included her in anything that would go to council that's how yeah. I, otherwise I would be I would be comfortable but I, um, if the rest of the council is comfortable with, I'd be comfortable with, you know, working on uh, us voting on a resolution that would go to council. Thank you, Deb. Mikhail, you go ahead. 
I, I agree as well. I, I think we're all very well aware of what the holiday or what what it is. So I don't think we need to. I mean, I don't know. I don't see any reason in the world why we wouldn't move forward with getting this um, get a resolution put together. And I and I agree. It would be I think good for Destiny to be there and you know be part of the presentation when we when we take it to the city council. But I don't see any reason why not to why we wouldn't go forward with it. I, I don't like to wait for things. Let's just get it done. Mm -hmm. Any other comment? I'll make Go a ahead. comment. Um, would you guys like me to prepare a, a draft resolution, you know, based on what you did with Indigenous Peoples Day, uh, and bring that to the next meeting to be reviewed and discussed and voted on, and potentially invite Destiny for that day as well? Yes. Yeah, would, um, so simultaneously though, as we're working on the resolution, could we look at the possibility of getting on um, city council's agenda uh, shortly after our next meeting? Because I think if you could get a resolution together and sent to some of us by email, you know, we're pretty responsive that we could make any edits and suggestions. So really at our next meeting, you know, we're just finalizing it, but I would like to get it on the, I, ideally I'd like to do the motion today for us to get it move forward to get on the agenda and then making sure that we have enough notice of time to get Miss Destiny involved because I agree that she very much needs to be a part of the bigger um, conversation. So what are our thoughts on that? Any other comment about this? If there's no other comments, I'd like to make the motion that as the Human Rights Commission, we work towards presenting a resolution to honor and celebrate Juneteenth, and we present that to City Council after our next Human Rights Commission meeting. Yep, Mikkel, you go ahead. Oh, I, well, I'll second that motion, but my other question, I guess, was to Josh, does it, I mean, are you able to get, how quickly can you get a resolution together? Do you have to run it by the state, the attorney? Yeah. And I mean, I don't, I don't want to get it on the agenda for city council and not have the resolution ready. I think we could have something by the next meeting, by the August meeting. Okay. Okay, I just didn't, I, I want to get it on as soon as we can. I just didn't know what everybody else's time frame is because sometimes there's other people involved in reviewing things that takes more time that we don't have control over. No, I appreciate you thinking of that. Thank well, you. I work with lawyers. So that's <laughs> the way it goes. Thank you so much, so, Mika. Deb, you want to go? Looking at the calendar, it looks like it would be then the August 24th council meeting, which would be the, the Monday right after our next meeting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that would be good because then I think it gives us time to get the community involved again. That was one of the things that was so interesting and I think so impactful when we presented it to city council when we were doing it with Indigenous Peoples Day that then that gives us enough time um, to work with our greater population and community to uh, show up and have a voice and support this. I mean, although it'll most likely still be virtual, um, it will be nice to do that. Um, as publicly involved as possible. So uh, my motion then still stands. And I second it. All right, uh, Connie Auden? Yes. Deb White? Yes. Shinwar Mai? Shinwar? Heather Keither? Yes. Mikhail Pauline Normandin? Yes. Thank you so much, guys. Oh, our next item uh, will be a uh, listening session for uh, follow-up dis dis discussions. And uh, I know that uh, our listening session, some people were saying that they were not feeling comfortable for sharing their story uh, in that listening sessions. but. Still, there were some other people who shared their story. You know, there's some people who uh, 
uh, was very thankful about having that uh, uh, storytelling. Even you know, some other people was very happy for sharing their experience, what they're experiencing here in this community. So anyone who is going to comment about that will be welcome too as well. Deb, you can go ahead. Thanks. Uh, I will just say I um, thanks again for organizing it. I think I I felt like it went very well, and I think to me I see it as a good starting point. And so I think to your point, um, Mr. Chair, is that you know different. There's different ways that we can go about this, and this was just one way. And um, I think we should use this as a, a starting point and talk about other places. I know even that night we talked about um, some other places where we could go to uh, meet with folks that are in a, you know, in, in a setting that might be they, where they might be more comfortable. And so I really, you know, look forward to those conversations of where um, the, you know, some of the commissioners um, or all the commissioners are just that we could play a role in creating those spaces for those safe conversations. Um, the other thing I'll mention is it, it could, because it came up at the city council meeting is um, one of the other council members asked about follow-up. And, uh, you know, if we will be following up with uh, some of the folks who spoke, and I don't know, I'm not really sure what that would entail or what, I think it really is more of a case by case basis. I can just tell you that one of the People that spoke who I know personally, and I did, you know, follow up with her afterwards. But um, I don't know what people's thoughts were on it. But we that did come up at our council meeting that they wondered if we were following up with, with folks or what is our, or what are our, you know, what are our next steps? Any other comment? Yes. Heather, you go ahead. Yeah, I think the follow up part is tricky because we didn't have like a registration. And so unless I, I also followed up with the individuals that I knew personally. Um, but I do think that a couple things on it. I think that one of the biggest messages we got and we kind of knew is that this is not the ideal setting. I mean, one, it's virtual, but also people want to have really personal, difficult conversations. And when organizations that they're not comfortable with are the ones that are um, like kind of watching us, it gets uncomfortable sometimes. And so I think somebody had brought it up even that if we want to kind of vent about law enforcement, yet there's officers there watching the conversation, you know, that can be really uncomfortable. And it's not that we're not trying to move towards um, a better community. We just have to be mindful of, of what the environment needs to look like. And so I think that moving forward, uh, we've talked to, I know at one, on Juneteenth, I talked to Miss Destiny about the possibility of partnering with her organization. I know um, Connie had talked about possibly doing something within his organization that I, I do think that we need to have um, some intentional follow up with community groups that want to partner with us to host these. The one thing I would add is the possibility of having some sort of um, like climate survey so that we have some indicators. So they're not just stories, but like, okay, within your story on a scale of one to five, five being, you know, I, I felt like I was, you know, really threatened, um, you know, on the maximum level to like, I just felt kind of uncomfortable. So we have a little bit of a scale and we have some like data. So we're not just telling stories, but we can also share, you know, I don't know, maybe out of 20 people that would show up and did these um, kind of evaluations or climate surveys, a majority of our population feels, you know, in the three to four range or something. I have no idea what that looks like, but I think that we need to be a little bit more strategic on how we then turn around and present it uh, back to city council because stories are really powerful because we get to hear the pain of what our community goes through. But I think to really move forward to make change, we need to have um, some sort of 
way to, to measure that, if that makes sense. Um, it's really complicated. I, I understand that. And I know it's going to take a while to wrap our minds around how we do that. I just think as we plan forward, because I do think we're going to have more conversations, uh, we need to figure out, you're right, the follow-up piece of it with individuals, um, but then also how are we going to present this in a format that is more than just stories, but also some data uh, when we present it for a bigger change when it comes to city council. I think it's always good to talk. I really, I was happy to have in that, those conversations. And I was another meeting today earlier and someone said that how can we love to each other if we don't know to each other? More listening session. So I agree with you and I think it's good to talk and come together and, and share the, our stories. And I feel like we can uh, organize um, a community conversation where uh, we can attend as uh, more remunerated commission uh, commissioners, and so that people will can will share their story to us, and we will share their story to the city officials. So that, of course, we need people to feel safe. If there is no any further comment, then I will uh, go ahead the next item. Our. Our next item will be uh, reports and uh, announcement, upcoming events, and I think I will start today before, hey, they do. Deb, you wanna go? I don't need to go first. Somebody else can go first this time. <laughs> you can go first. Okay. <laughs> Well, actually, and I was trying to raise my hand before, but oh. I was very slow. <laughs> I was going to say maybe I, you know, I do think even just looking at um, other opportunities with listening sessions too. Maybe it's you know, so having things like that more regularly. So it's it's just something that we do on a on a consistent basis, so that we get out in different settings and. You know, I, I would like us to, to think about how we could do things like that in a way, kind of like the coffee with the mayor and, you know, how they do that every month. And it's an opportunity to work on relationship building and having those conversations outside of like the formal city hall, you know. So so maybe let, let's come back to that on our next agenda, too. It's just like what are some of those places where we can take the show on the road and go, you know, meet people where they are and where they feel safe. So, but uh, my report, I just wanted to say, I attended a webinar recently for the Government Alliance for Race and Equity. And this is a national organization of local, state and regional governments that works on issues of race and equity um, within government institutions. And it's something that um, we're, we actually, we're exploring um, becoming involved with this. We I found out about it from our Moorhead Resilience Task Force. And um, it's a great way of finding out what other communities are doing to help advance equity within, within their cities and um, communities. And we are, uh, they have, they have information sessions twice a month. And I believe Mayor Judd and, um, City Manager, Interim City Manager Molly are planning to attend the next one. And so we may look at having Moorhead become a member of GAIR. And there's lots of resources that they provide for um, all aspects of the city. So it's kind of neat. They have things like work groups for issues, like you could become, you could join one on, they have one right now, it's a COVID-19 rapid response one. Um, but they also have ones on all different aspects of your city. So they have a work group for people that are working on arts and culture. So you could look at how you could integrate um, racial equity issues within your arts and culture commission, as well as within park and recreation and law enforcement and housing and you know all different things. So it's something that might be a resource for all of our different city departments and commissions that they could tap into this. But they also provide training and they work with communities to build racial equity action plans. And so um, I'll, I'll follow up and let you know what happens, but it's one possible resource that we might 
pursue as a city and work collaboratively um, to create plans for advancing racial equity in our community. Thank you so much, Commissioner Deb. Commissioner Mikhail, you can go ahead. Okay, I don't really have any announcements. I just wanted to kind of follow up on the whole um, listening sessions. Just, just a thought, I'm not sure how, I can understand how people, and I wasn't able to attend any of them, my schedule got a little crazy, but I can understand how people would be a little nervous about sharing their stories via uh, Zoom or however they were doing it, but is it, I don't know how often you're thinking about having them, but is it a possibility, like we have one every other month, like right after the Human Rights Commission meeting, once we can all be together? Um, just down in the lobby, like like coffee with the mayor, and maybe um, that might be an option. Rather than taking up another day for everybody and we'd all be there already, it might be something we can just add on to our meeting for a little bit longer. I think the, Deb already mentioned, but we, in the New American community, the COVID-19 thing is kind of uh, spreading, but we we have been created a response team, COVID-19 response team, uh, together with Afro-American Development Association and South Sudanese Foundation, uh, as well as uh, Concordia College. We have been able to develop short-time solution that was able to address uh, our immediate founding challenges and mobilize our talent team to reach new American who are farthest from opportunity higher here in Mohead now with the help of our great partner Concordia College through the Bush Foundation Community Innovation Grant. We have been able to help new American communities uh, of Mohead. We partner with a public health consultant to provide trainings and, and technical support to our team of uh, conducting professionals and other strategic New American leaders. Our community as New American Response Team was able to deliver real-time information about COVID-19 preventions and response service for the New American in Mohead. We were able to equip our community response team with technology support, include laptops, trust phone, and online conference platform to communicate remotely with the New American community. Our team was able to do follow-up phone calls for daily for those who are infected by the virus. We were able to provide emergency assistance to the new American grocery translations, assistance, and other basic needs. Our community response team were able to deliver support and community members as needed. So uh, this, we have been able to, de to develop and uh, uh, disseminate culturally turn messages and respond a question of practice experienced by new Americans. This, uh, our rapid response team uh, community members were able to keep up with our translate CDC federal, uh, CDC federal state, city and local announcement information from medical professionals and information about available resources and activate phone trace and bus translate announcements on designed by social media platform, the members to help community members to complete online unemployment benefits applications to communicate with the uh, benefit administration and weekly recertifications as well. So this group, um, we get some grant by Concordia College, uh, but with the help of the Community Innovation Grant. And also I was trying to mention uh, Mohead Public Housing currently announced there is a vacant board wow. position. Commissioners are appointed by the mayor and most reside the, in Moorhead. The board currently meet monthly in fourth Thursday of the month, 11.30 a.m. The board terms for five years, they said. So to apply this, you can fill out the application for the, for the appointment form of the city of Moorhead website. People interested in applying may also contact the executive director down if you want to obtain more information about uh, the agency, you can connect down through 218-299-5459. It's 218-299-5459. Uh, one more thing I was trying to mention is uh, uh, Moorhead Public Schools. Moorhead Public Schools, uh, they boasted the Director of Equity and Inclusion 
This person will provide leadership and advocacy program to the service to support students and faculties. So uh, I am going to also thank for Mohead Public Schools for taking the right step, uh, this historic decision, and I hope this person will help a lot for the minority kids as well. Uh, also, M State, they are looking assistant director, I believe. My Mayor Jay is the director. So I'm very happy for the change, uh, not only one institution, but for the whole city. Uh, I sit down a lot of institutions, and I don't see a single one who are in a defensive way. All of them are willing to change, and I think this is a real action. Thank you, everyone. And any other comment? Heather, you go ahead. Um, I also want to add, I don't know if many of you are familiar with the Bush Fellowship or what that entails. Um, it's an amazing opportunity for leaders in our community to get the funding that they need to move forward with um, ideas, research, school, um, different things. But it's really focused on supporting individuals who are doing work within our underserved populations. It is a very, very extensive process to earn this fellowship. And so I just kind of want to put it out there that the next application opens on August 18th. And so if it's something that you feel like would be relevant to you or that you, you know, are looking at going to the next level um, of leadership and you need those development skills and networking skills, um, this is an amazing opportunity. I just want to try to plant the seed early enough so that people in our community can prepare for that um, because it is a pretty extensive process. So it's Bush Foundation. Um, you can find the information online. I just wanted to share that because um, I think if more of our community members know about that and work towards that fellowship, we could really have an amazing impact here in our community. And we have some amazing people here um, in our community that could really benefit from that. Um, I was also going to mention the job postings, but um, Connie already did that, so that's that's all the updates I have. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Heather. Commissioner Deb, you want to go ahead? Yes, um, Connie, I was just going to request that we have for now as a regular um, check-in at our meetings an update about um, things related to COVID-19, and I'm, I'm really glad that you shared information about the New American COVID response group, because, you know, I think early on, that was one area that I think didn't get um, enough attention is how this um, pandemic has disproportionately affected our new American community. And I think making sure that we keep that on the radar, that we're um, persistent about seeing if there's gaps in terms of the service and um, outreach that we're providing as a city. I think that's really important. And so I'd like us to continue to follow up with that. And so if you would be willing to make sure that we have that as a, you know, just an item on the agenda that we that we um, keep going, you know, keep following up with that, because we know that as we move into the fall, that it's very likely that um, that the number of cases in our community are going to increase. We're already seeing that increase right now. And so making sure that we are um, doing everything we can to help ensure that all of our community is well served within this, um, I think is really important. So, so I'd like it if we continue to touch base on that in our meetings. I'll be happy for that. And one problem we have uh, as a new American community now is a lot of people uh, afraid to go to the hospital and test themselves because they have this mentality that whoever go to the hospital will die, people uh, will survive at home, all that stuff. So we are trying to tell them it's okay to go to the hospital and test yourself. Some of them, when they show up to the hospital, they were told they already have the virus and they never knew that. So. Some of them are nine families living in maybe three to four bedrooms using two bathrooms. So if one of them affected, all of them will be affected. Heather, you wanna go ahead? Uh, yeah, I have one last thing that I was just wanted to follow up. It's kind of for Josh, I think. Um, I don't remember when we talked about it, but I just wanna put another plug out there that we are accepting applications for award four. Um, uh, commission, um, 
Well, we, we have an opening on our board, but then I think like the, is it the housing um, board has an open at large position as well. Um, so I know that there's, there's a lot of opportunities to get involved in our community, but one of the things I wanted to specifically ask was, do we know where we are at recruiting or adding that youth um, commissioner back onto the Human Rights Commission? I know we talked about it and it had been um, part of some of the original uh, commission standards. And I'm just wondering if we followed up on that and if that's something we can continue to move forward with. Um, the rules and procedures for the HRC suggest that one of the seven members be, be a, a minor, you know, be a child, 12 to 17, I believe it says. Um, <clears throat> so that Ward 4 appointment, it's certainly an option that they could consider it as part of that. So we can't have, so really then maybe one of our at-large positions sh should have or could have been filled by a youth. Because in my mind, like having wards are still important, but then adding an element of a youth voice as its own space um, is really important as well because if we just stick to the geographic area of a ward option right now, I think we're limiting who could potentially be involved. And so um, if it's not really a possibility, how do we maybe look at making updates uh, for adding that element into this group? Um, someone can correct me if, if they know differently. As far as I know, the appointments are all made at the council level. And so it's it's at their discretion who they're going to appoint. They get applications received uh, for people who are interested. Uh, they can you know seek out someone who they think might be a good candidate for it. But it's at it's at that level that the appointments are made. So if I think if the Human Rights Commission is interested in in specifically how that appointment is made, I think the discussion would have to be made with those who are doing the appointing. Do you have any input on this, Deb? Yeah, well, you're right. And so right now, with the, the makeup of the board, you have the representatives from each ward and then the one at large position. And so it would, in this case, it would have, we could have a conversation with the two council members from Ward 4 and encourage them to, you know, just say, just to remind them, because it may not even be something that they're aware of, you know, to say, if you happen to have an applicant that is a minor, that, you know, that they could um, serve and that's something that we would be interested in um, in seeing on, on the commission. But I wonder if there is value in pursuing um, adding a second at-large position that was designated for somebody who is, un is under 18. That, and it could be that, you know, that one specific seat is held so that we could have somebody that is a, you know, that we could have youth representation on the commission. Because I agree that it does sort of then um, come down to the, you know, the ward. Folks may want somebody from their ward and, and we may have a youth, but they're not in that particular ward. And so, um, but it would be nice to explore whether we could add another position that is uh, always, because other boards and commissions will have specific, like we have somebody from Moorhead Business Association always has a seat on EDA. So in other boards and commissions, they sometimes have other seats that are designated for somebody from a specific organization, a specific category like that. So we could perhaps do something like that. Hey, you wanna add something? So is that something that we would have to make a motion for an amendment? Um, or is that something that we would have to make a motion for like to present as a suggestion to city council? Like I'm, I, I like the idea of adding an, an additional at large spot that's focused effort is to be filled by youth. I'm just wondering how do we do that? What is the process that we need to go through um, to make that happen if um, you know this this commission feels like that's important? Um, I guess here's what I'll say about that, and we could certainly do a little more 
looking research in the background about how something like that could work. Um, what I'll say is that right now the, the rules and procedures are accepted by the city council. They're the ones who approved it and put it in motion. At that time, it was determined that the appropriate number of board members was seven. And in those rules, it, it lists um, what kind of diverse group should make up that seven body, seven member body. So I would encourage maybe all of you to go to the Human Rights Commission's page and look through those rules. I think, you know, a, a potential change, I think it would have to be recommended to the city council level. Um, however, those items are already in there. It's just some of them aren't in practice right now. So whether you were to change it or add a person, it's still the issue of in practice meeting what those rules and procedures say, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that does. So maybe our own homework is to look at it and then could it be something that we add onto the agenda for our next meeting so we could have a little bit more of an in-depth conversation about it once we've all reviewed uh, the information you're talking about? Sure, please. Before we, before we go ahead, our next item, I would like to uh, thank again for Madam William Del Rey and Concordia College for helping New Americans to fight for COVID-19. And our next and last item will be new business. Any new business? Nobody yet. Yes, not. If there is no any, any other business, then I'm going to agenda the meeting. It's uh, 5.52 p.m. now, and our meeting is closed. Thanks. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.